A huge decision is coming up for the Montreal Canadiens as we're getting into that time of year where all these draft lists are coming out and The Athletic recently posted their top list and I gotta say there's a lot of great news for us Habs fans. We're gonna dive into that. Plus Montreal smokes Seattle. We got the Slav graph updated plus some other great performances and of course we have to talk about David Reinbacher and the Laval Rockets three game win streak over the weekend. There's a ton to talk about so stick around for all of that on this episode of Habs digest live stream edition and if you're watching this live welcome into the stream hello everyone and hey if you're watching this as a vod we got live streams every single monday from now until the end of the season and maybe even further so if you want your weekly fix live join us here every monday around 6 15 p.m eastern let's jump first into the Laval Rocket, Jesse. We got a, a lot to get into in this uh, this video, but my goodness, David Reinbacher and the Laval Rocket, what a weekend they had. They now sit only one point behind the Toronto Marlies for fourth in the division, and now only three points out of third in the division as they get a, an amazing three-game win streak over the weekend. It was uh, just amazing to see what kind of impact Reinbacher had, first of all, but second, just how good the Rocket are. You got to think bringing a guy like that in, just not only has he been so amazing, for them but you got to think that that inspires a lot of the players to do a bit better too missing link not just for the laval rocket but for the montreal canadians kind of that connecting piece of bringing the play from your defensive zone up ice like you really need that right that's where the play starts and if you have a d that's capable of doing this you're now taking the attack to the other team right you're on your toes right coming at it with speed instead of the other way around. And that's really the name of the game and, and his game, like, you know, in today's game. So it is absolutely unreal to see that. Three games, you know, three wins. Like, how he's just changed things for the Laval Rockets so quickly, like, Honestly, you can't script a better start than this. No, you can't. And that amazing dangle and goal. And as we see us, some messages in the chat here. Reinbacher has transitioned well. One goal, one assist, two points in three games as a two-way shutdown defenseman. That shutdown game too, like that's something that we haven't quite seen him him take that leap at yet we see all the potential there of course his skating primes him to be a fantastic shutdown defender especially at the nhl level where the ice is much smaller he doesn't have to cover as much space so i think that's going to turn out very well for him but um he has just looked so smooth jesse and while there were some hiccups like maybe we expected i think this transition like you said you can't script a better start but it, it seems like one of those cases where for him the north american ice arguably looks better than the bigger ice in Europe. I don't know if that's because of his elite decision-making skill, being able to, to make these breakout passes in these small little windows and being one of those guys who's extremely calm under pressure. That has really translated well, where he has to make his decisions faster, his step-ups a lot faster. Do you think that that has been a sort of big factor for not only him, but for the Laval Rocket being able to win these games on the backs of him, you know, just being that mature, calming presence who can also easily transition from to o. yeah his mobility is really the key to his game as we're seeing it's like less ice to deal with than in europe so it's almost now like he needs less ice to then really get to where he wants to and that's the opposing net and the fact that he's showing this like no sort of hesitation no reluctance you know kind of coming in early you could totally say okay yeah just play it safe you know just make sure you're there to really be the backstop for your team but this guy just said I'm going to come to Laval. I'm going to start making a difference right away. I'm going to make reads, and I'm going to jump on that. And you have to feel like if you're Martin St. Louis, you're loving what you see because his whole style of play is about playing the game that's in front of you and not being afraid to really take those chances that are there because if you don't take your ch those chances, your opposition is going to. So it's paramount that you really do this. So it's just seeing the way that he plays. Like, you know, you see why Martin St. Louis was so excited about David Rollenbacher Right from the beginning, Martin St. Louis, somebody that knows so much about hockey, there is a reason why he was so excited to have David Reibach here right from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. And his 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 play has just been, uh, well, it, it's been better than we expected. And who knows if he'll make the Habs next year, but regardless, he'll play at least in Laval. And there's, there's a lot of great stuff to come from him. As I'm going to take some time to read the chats, but as I do that, guys... Make sure you hit like on the stream. We got 126 of you in here, but only 22 likes. If you hit like, not only does it help you guys out, you know, help support us. It also helps other Habs fans out. If they're maybe, they maybe don't know we're streaming or in the future, if they're watching this as a recorded video, it'll help them find more Habs content. So if you can hit that like, I want to see that hit at least 50 in the next couple minutes. Going to take a look through the chat. Thank you to all of you saying hi, saying great show. Really appreciate all you guys. Um, we got a lot of questions here. Thank you for the positive attitude. That's what we do. We like to stay positive around these parts. You know, we try and stay free from the negativity um 
I just got a question here from uh, Vincent or Vincent. Uh, let's take a look. He says, if you can only keep one of our D-men prospect, who would you say is untouchable? Well, Jesse, I think that transitions really well. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a reason I saved that until the end of that section. Because for me right now, I think that answer is David Reinbacher. I think he is the one guy who is untouchable. While Gooley is definitely uh, proven at the NHL level, and he is a phenomenal defenseman at the NHL level, when you look at all the young guys, even Lane Hudson is fantastic, but I think Reinbacher has that right-handed shot, that shutdown ability, but that all that ability to also be able to be a fantastic creator on the offensive end. I think his pedigree and just his willingness to get better and his mentality are all things that we will see come to fruition into a fantastic all-star level player. Maybe not next year, but in two or three, four years from now. And like Quinn Hughes said in the in the thing we talked about a couple days ago when he was talking about Hudson, it still applies to Ryan Bacher. It's not about how good you are now, the age of 19 or 20. It's about how good you will be at 24, 25. My answer for that is Ryan Bacher. He's my untouchable. What about you? Steady Davey, you know, definitely it's hard to bet against that just because his game translates so well. You know he's going to be effective at the NHL level. He was just born to be that type of player, right? That's great. You know, I, I definitely get that. I will say that I still believe Lane Hudson has a higher ceiling than David than David Reibach. Obviously, his floor is much higher than that for Lane Hudson, but... There's just something about Lane's offensive game, right, that is just absolutely, that can really take over a game where David Reinbach is really that safe bet and you got to have that on your team. It's really that foundational piece. I believe that Lane Hudson's that type of star player that really takes you over the top. Like if you want to compete in the playoffs, you really want to win those key games like that, that real competitor that's just going to take the game into his hands and really just will the team to a victory. Like this guy loves to win. I think it's underrated how intelligent he is, how he processes the game. I think that he's just going to do unreal things. You know, I think if we could have an Adam Fox or even type of better, I mean, I think you have to take that guy. Yeah, I think that's fair too. I mean, there's there's a lot of opinions out there. There's a lot of great defensemen to choose from. And hey, who knows which one will stay? I saw a question asking about the offseason. Uh, we might get to that a little bit later as we talk about some other offseason moves the Habs might make when it comes to the draft. Um, but yeah, guys, there's, there's a lot of questions, a lot of a lot of things in the chat. We're going to try to get to what we can. Um, as always, though, if you really want a question answered, maybe we miss your message or something something like that. We will be answering questions that are sent in super chats um, in priority. So if you really want to get a question answered, I suggest you send a super chat. And not like, again, we don't expect you guys to do that. We will try to get to every question if we can, but we do have a lot of stuff to get into in this video. So just wanted to give you guys that heads, heads up. But uh, we talked a lot about Reinbach. We've talked a lot about Laval, but hey, Montreal played a game last night, Jesse, and they played pretty dang well, getting a big old victory, scoring five goals against the Seattle Kraken. Now we can go in here and, and take, well, I don't even know. You can take as many players here as you want. Of course, Caulfield getting a point and new hook, getting two goals. Oh, he was so close to that hat trick, ringing the inside of the post in the third period, or maybe the late second. I can't remember for that hat trick goal. I couldn't quite get it. Slavkowski continuing his seven game point streak. Suzuki with two more points. Um, I don't even know who to start with. Jesse Gooley with the three points. Matheson with one of the Habs goals of the year. Is there anyone you wanted to start with and pick up right off the bat? Because I don't know if I can make a choice. <laughs> This is the youth movement as a whole because everybody that we saw contributing last night, these are all people that I reckon are going to be a big part of this Habs scene going forward. So these are the guys you want to see contributing. You know, obviously Slav starting it off, being there in front of the net. Like, you can see he's gotten that practice of being in front and kind of learning how to capitalize on those opportunities, get even better. And that's how you score goals in, at the NHL. But I love so much that you can score goals – um, in front of the net, but then also with his shot as well in the power play. So I think given those couple different options is absolutely unreal. He's on a tremendous heater right now. But then obviously Suzuki continuing. What a shot, you know, looking absolutely unreal. Just such continuing what release. we expect from Right? Like so elite. That was such a quick, re such a quick shot. But then obviously Newhook. Like these guys, these other ones we know. Like Slav, we know what to expect. Suzuki now. But I mean, new hook for him to take this big step up, almost get this hat trick. Like, how nice was that shot that rang off the post? Like, that was a beauty shot as well. Like, that is big. I know you're pulling for your fellow Newfoundlanders yes, there. Sir. It's like, this guy is like, we need him to really take it to the next level. And he's doing that. I've wanted to see it. I believe in him. But like, that is huge. Him taking these steps up, us getting the secondary scoring. But I mean, Gooley, again, you know, playing an amazing game, showing why he is a first pairing defensive guy on any team in the league by the time he's in his prime he's just a first pairing guy 
anywhere around the league. He is unreal. He's going to start getting a lot more respect around the NHL. But I mean, Matheson, like, how nice was that goal? That was absolutely unreal. The amount of speed that he showed there, like, we know he's got wheels. That was next level. He basically humiliated him. You know, he surpassed him, took it to the inside. So much skill on that finish. Amazing hands. You know, it's like Matheson, Cooley, Newhook, Suzuki, Slap. These are all core pieces of this team going forward. These are all players Kent Hughes loves, right? So you know that this is bringing a smile to his face, and it's kind of look making him look pretty smart at the same time, too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That Matheson goal, I believe that was Tatar that he just beat down the ice like it was nothing. Matheson on the PK, Tatar on the PP, and Tatar is not a bad skater. Like, I know he's getting older, but like, my goodness, made him, left him in the dust. Uh, Connor McMatheson, I see in the chat. That's that's pretty good. I mean, it's kind of true. Kind of looked like it. Um, but yeah, you're very right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Speaking of Alex Newhook, I mean, I was thrilled, more thrilled than almost anybody. Of course, you guys know Newhook is maybe my favorite. Hab. I love a lot of the guys, but you know, fellow Newfoundlander, it's hard not for him to be that go-to guy for me on this team. But two more goals, and I saw someone leave a comment saying, "Wow, you know, if if Newhook can turn into a half point per game middle six player, I would love that." And I'm just saying to myself, like. Well, that's basically what he already is. Like, he's already is that for Montreal this year, if not even better than a half point per game. He's on closer to, uh, you know, well, he's, I guess he's about 44, 45 point pace. But at least in the recent games, since he's been back from injury. He has looked a lot better than he was, maybe closer to a 50 point pace, 15, 20 goal guy. And I absolutely love that. Um, Gouli, of course, as you mentioned, has been phenomenal. Suzuki, just, I, I don't even know what's left to say. We all know he is elite at this point. He actually spoke about potentially being on Team Canada today, said he would absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to talk a bit more about Slav. And as you guys know, we got the Slav, the Slav graph. This is the thing, the thing we talked about in yesterday's video, Slavkovsky's production versus Miko Ranton. And now this seven game point streak, he has officially surpassed Miko Rantanen's draft plus two season in point production at a full year younger. Um, yeah, we all thought he got that first goal. Uh, it ended up being Ghoulies and Slav didn't touch it, but I think they officially gave it to him at one point, or at least there was a lot of people saying he had scored it. It ended up not being his, but he did get an assist later on that Suzuki goal. He got credited for it, barely touched it, but hey, he got credit for it. Um, so that point streak continues, Jesse. This is his, well, let me just bring that up. How many, what is this? What was the last big point streak he had? Was it, let's see, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight game point streak, and now he's on a seven game point streak again. The fact that he's had two seven plus game point streaks at age 19 to me is like, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I know this first line is good, but for the amount of talent on this Montreal team and for where they are in the standings, that is exceedingly rare. And when it's a young guy, what's one of the most important things? It's consistency, right? Like, it's great to see the goals from time to time, but from a former first round pick, you know, first overall, it's like, you want to see that night in night out. And I think that's not too much to ask, but the fact that we're seeing this now, like this level of production, this level of consistency just bodes so well for the future. And for really Kent Hughes wanting to build on this team for the future. Cause he's seeing, okay, this isn't a one-off. This is really something I can kind of work with here. Right. Which is really amazing. To see, like for me right now, it's like, it's Miko Ratnan 2.0, uh, bigger, faster, uh, stronger, better shot. Okay, maybe a couple things I'm getting ahead of myself on, but like pretty dang close to have more points now Not and in less games. Like this guy is just absolutely wild, right? Like we're going to keep hyping him up till he tells us to stop because he's on fire. He's got fire coming from his mouth right now. He's just doing it all. Yeah, he is. I mean, you're right, Chad Kofsky, of course, as well. We got, I got the two things there for Slaff. Uh, I mean, he's a Chad. He is Slaffzilla. He is everything. Uh, and we got, yeah, uh, it's just some amazing stuff. And we got a super chat, Jesse, from uh, Jay Fowler, though. And I believe, Jay, is that you who left the chat earlier saying you were from Val d'Or, Quebec? Well, bonjour, Jay. Comment ça va? Uh, of course, we both speak French here at Habs Digest. I don't know if a lot of you guys know that. We we both are fluent in French, Jesse more so than myself. But hey, uh, he says, I think Fowler is going to be a star goaltender. And uh, well, we might as well comment on that. Jesse, you left a super chat. Thank you very much, Jay. Really appreciate it. Again, if you send a super chat, we will read your message in priority. There's, as you guys can see, there's a lot of a lot of chats here. Um, but what do you think about Fowler? I know we've talked a lot about him, and as we're talking about this Montreal Canadiens team and Primo, who just had a wonderful game last night, Monty sort of on a streak that Primo was uh, at one point where the Habs can't quite get those wins with Monty, and that Primo uh, well, he had one dud game since Allen got traded, but he's been really, really good against sporting a an above nine. 100 save percentage on the year 
But Jacob Fowler, I mean, to me, he seems like the Habs goalie prospect with the most upside. And I know some of the Habs organization feel the Evgeny Volokin could be good, and I'm quite high on him as well. Um, but Jacob Fowler, that mentality, we've seen him for Boston College. They are the juggernaut to beat as the Frozen Four schedule has officially come out. It looks like Boston College is the favorite. They're the number one seed. And Lane Hudson, Lane Hudson and Macklin Celebrini's Boston University is the number two seed. I think this tournament is going to tell us a lot about Jacob Fowler. I know goalies will take usually maybe another three, four years before we know what Fowler will be at the next level. But all we can say at this point is the signs are there for this dude to, to potentially be something special. For sure. And when so many Habs fans are kind of all seeing the same thing and we kind of see that, like, there's something to that, right? Habs fans were some of the smartest, you know, hockey, most educated hockey fans on the planet. If a lot of us are seeing it, there tends to be something to that. There's kind of a beauty, right, of kind of getting an opinion. So many people are feeling the same way, you know, as our viewers here about Jacob Fowler, and rightfully so. Like, I think he's the type of player where – you know, barring something wild, he's going to become the number one goalie for the Montreal Canadiens due course. He's just like the type of competitor, even if he gets in as a backup, I just feel like he's such a gamer. He's not going to be satisfied until he has that number one spot. He's just going to keep battling. Mm -hmm. He's just going to keep putting in awesome performances until he gets it. There's just certain type of guys that just aren't satisfied with, that, with being the backup. And Jacob Fowler's one of those type of guys and rightfully so he showed that if you give the crease to him if you put the game in his hands he's gonna do something you know not only putting up amazing numbers but when necessary he'll just do that ridiculous save that you just need to do sometimes right to really get your to, to really frustrate your opponent so much and to really just seal the game you know for your team you have the clip well, look at this push play here. It again and again like you know so acrobatic but like He's not even wild in his movement there. Like, you can still see his structure. He's not losing his composure. He's not wailing across the net. Like, it's like a Hasek type of save, but, like, he's in control. It's just an explosive post-to-post -post type of save, right? For myself, loving goalies, like, I am so excited about this player. Absolutely. I think you have every reason to feel that way. But, I, you know, it's like we got so many good young guys right now, like Volokin, who's amazing, coming up. But we have to remember, like, Montebo's – not that old either. No, he's not. Primo had some ridiculous saves last night. Like, incredible athleticism. Like, I still can't believe it. A couple times, if you have to double take, I'm like, Primo is very quietly doing exactly what he needs to do to secure a bag for himself here in Montreal. It's really amazing to see right now. But, I mean, Jacob Fowler, I mean, the, the young man's got star written all over him. Yeah, we're a bit spoiled with our prospects now. It feels awesome to be a Habs fan, doesn't it? Just looking forward to the future. All these guys, the current guys, the future guys, just amazing stuff. Thank you again very much, Jay, for the super chat. Again, if you want your question answered, send a super chat, no minimum or anything like that, but we will read it in priority as I'm going to try and get to one or two questions here in the chat. There's a lot of them, Jesse. Uh, there's a lot of you guys asking about prospects in the draft. We're going to get to that. That is the main topic of this video, so stick around for that um, and let other people know. Hey, if you guys know anyone else that might be interested, send them our way. Um, I'm going to take a quick look, try and pick one out. I see a 4U2NV in the chat is really high on new hook. He's always in the comment section as well and in these uh, in these live streams. Uh, thank you very much for being here. There's a lot of stuff. I see someone mentioned Florian Jackeye. Okay, before we get to uh, the final part of this video, the draft stuff, uh, maybe a quick note on Florian Jackeye, Jesse. Five points in this last game, over a point per game in the, over a point per game in the OHL. Something we just did not expect from Florian Jack. Guys, we actually get another super chat from John, from John Raymond. Thank you very much, John. I don't see a message, but uh, going to say thank you so, so much. And if you meant to type a message with that, send it there. But that's their first super on the live stream. And guys, give Jay and John a shout out in the chat, please. Saying thank you very much for supporting us. Really, really appreciate that. Um, as we're going to continue on to Florian Jack. Guy, and if I see a message from John, I'll read it out loud, of course. Um, five points, Jesse. This dude was like, what, a 35 goal scorer in the OHL. I'm seeing people stay, already stapling him as a bottom six guy for Montreal in the future. I don't know if I'd go that far, but as of now, like, who knows what this growth path could possibly be, especially with his brother Arbor. I don't know. I, I just feel like I've been super, super thrilled with Florian's development. I think a lot of Habs fans are. Yeah, and when you, for like our bottom six, if you're getting that energy... You know, and then to cap it off with maybe like a little bit of that offensive threat when it needs to be, that's what you're asking. You know, I don't think it's crazy. Like Florian Jack, I could definitely see being a 4C for the future and probably only barring from going up just because we really have some great prospects kind of coming at the same time, right? But I mean, like, I really feel that management, they're so happy that they picked Jack. I like this has to feel great for Arbor and for Florian. Like, what a way to finish off the season. Like, already an incredible season. And then you cap it off 
with five points. Like, again, showing some speed sometime, that ability to get in the zone. Like, you know, that's something, again, when you play with speed in today's NHL, like, that's translatable. You know, that can happen, right? So for me, I'm a big fan of players that obviously play with a lot of energy, play with a lot of intensity. But then if you can have that that scoring touch, you know, to kind of keep the opposition honest, you know, I could see Florian being an amazing type of PK type of guy where it's like, you know that he's really going to play some good defense, but this is the type of guy that can take the puck the other way if need be. So obviously like a great pick once, you know, once and again and showing that you can never, ever bet against any jack eye. No, apparently not. I don't know if there's another one somewhere in the system. I don't know. Sign their fathers. I, you never know. Their mom, their dad, their grand. Just sign them to the organization. Their development curve will be amazing. Um, Jesse, I did see a message from John after. He just said, just a thank you for great Habs content from a U.S.-born Canadians fan in North Carolina. Shout out, North Carolina, John. Shout out to you for supporting us. Thank you all for being here, of course. Um, and there's a lot of stuff we've already talked about, but there's something else we got to talk about coming up, and that is the draft but before we get into the draft a reminder to hit like on the stream guys we're at 62 likes there's over 200 of you in here i'd like to see that get as close to 100 as we can i don't know if we'll hit it but if you guys could hit that button push us out help support us here at habs digest to create this content for you let's get into the draft now uh oh i actually had that slavkovsky card up uh, that's not what i wanted this is what i wanted here 2024 nhl draft ranking macklin celebrini these scott wheeler's march top 64 prospects and scott wheeler posted his top prospects eligible for the draft this year jesse and this is a good thing because well we're going to show you some of the stuff that he showed so his tier one is macklin celebrini which makes sense but this is the only player in his tier one this year he's clearly the number one overall pick he's going to be the number one overall pick that is what it is he's not going to fall to montreal unless montreal gets lucky and wins the lottery but the good news for us habs fans well, that's the fact that his Tier 2, well, that's a lot of players. This is just the first half of Tier 2 right here. Artyom Levshunov, Michigan State, which actually, that's quite high for him. Ivan Demidov, Cole Eiserman, who actually some people don't even have in their top 10. Zayn Parekh, Sam Dickinson, and that's not it. Zeev Boyam, Anton Silia, Berkeley Cat, and Consta Hellenius, Caden Lindstrom, and Carter Yakemchuk. There's a lot, a lot of guys here, as I apologize right now. There we go. Sometimes the animations don't work when the pictures don't show up the way I want them to. But uh, you're going to have to fix them manually. Apologize for that if it goes black for a second. But Jesse, there's a lot of prospects here. But the good news is Montreal, right? The odds are we're not going to win the lottery, right? It would be amazing if we did. We got Macklin Celebrini. Can you imagine Celebrini and Hudson together at the NHL level? The good thing is Tier 2, not just from Scott Wheeler, but from a lot of analysts, that like next gap after Celebrini, it's like there's a lot of guys that you can't go wrong with. So no matter where Montreal ends up picking, whether it's at number two or whether it's at number eight, a lot of these guys could go anywhere in that range. And I know I'm seeing a lot of people say Cole Eiserman for that pure goal scoring ability, although there are some concerns about his defense and his playmaking and well, basically everything except his goal scoring is what it is. Like Consta Hellenius, uh, but you got some great defensemen like Zane Parekh, who was up there at the top of OHL scoring as a defenseman. Unbelievable stuff. And before I let you answer, I apologize. We got a $10 super chat from apparently number one fan, Angie Antolinas. Thank you. You. thank you so much angie again if you send a message i will read it in priority but ten dollars like unbelievable thank you so 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 much for your constant support of the stream really really happy to have you here um jesse i just spoke a lot about prospects obviously super thankful for the super chat as well um I, any thoughts on the prospects i'm sure a lot of you fans in the chat have them too let me know who you guys like in this upcoming draft I wonder if, you know, Kent Hughes is trying to have his cake and eat it too. It's like, okay, last year, play it safe. Yeah, secure, you know, the back end and outwards with David Reinbacher. But is this the year where we, we get our rush in, right? Because I think, you know, even, even Kent has said himself, he's probably leading a little bit more towards getting an offensive guy. Um, so, I mean, imagine that we could get a, a potential, you know, even Demodog mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. That would absolutely incredible to see um you know obviously an amazing dynamic player but i mean you know you have to consider cole eiserman too just because we know nowadays it's a shooter's league like if you're a guy with a great shot these are the guys that exceed the most in the nhl and if we're looking for goal scoring which is what we need the most you know you're looking towards that but i feel like you know, maybe we already have a little bit of that in Cole Caulfield as it is right now. And just, we know Kent, he's a stickler, but in the right ways. He knows he wants the complete 
he wants to all around package as much as possible. So I'm wondering if maybe even though we need the offense more than anything else, that that's what stops us from maybe getting Eisenman there. Um, Cause you have to figure it, you know, obviously, you know, we know culture is a big thing. The character it's a big thing, but then obviously combine that with the offensive talent. So I'm just wondering if maybe we get our crack this year round at our Russian. I, I think you might be right now. Demidov, for all the people that have concerns about him kind of doing this in a lesser league, it doesn't matter, at least to me. There's a reason he's still number two on most people's draft boards, or at least close to number two. Of course, he's not two on, on Scott Wheeler's, but Demidov, like, like some scouts are saying, like he does stuff you just never have seen. His creativity with the puck is amazing, and his ability to combine that creativity and his skill to get around people, create opportunities, is, is absolutely phenomenal. I'm quite high personally on Berkeley Catton. Um, I think he has some some game breaking potential simply because while he can handle the puck with the best of them, he also has a great three zone game at times. I mean, his defense is definitely not amazing. It, it, it's probably average, but he's definitely I feel like he projects to be able to make a lot of great defensive plays as well. I mean, if you're looking for a pure three zone guy, guy who can do a bit of everything, Consta Hellenius, who has a lot of Sebastian Ajo comparisons from people in certain circles. So there's a lot of stuff there. And actually, we got we got some other stuff to get into, Jesse. First, Philippe Latin Poirier, member for three months, RIP Akira Toriyama, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Bring Magic Hudson home quick. I definitely agree. I think Hudson, I saw a question earlier about whether he'll play in the NHL this year. I think we've discussed that. I think it's basically a certainty. Uh, Jesse, I don't know if you know of Philippe Latin Poirier, uh, but, uh, but shout out to them for being a channel member for three months and we also got jay fowler though who says caden lindstrom which is a great pick as well i'm seeing comps to um quentin byfield and caden uh caden lindstrom a guy who doesn't necessarily project to be a star in his first or second year tell me where you've heard that before a power forward that projects to be a star maybe in their third or fourth year uh byfield a lot of slavkovsky in him uh jesse any, any thoughts on these things too bring magic hudson home and shout out to jay again in the chat for uh talking about caden lindstrom maybe another uh somewhat slept on prospect by some Habs fans. Thank you, Philip. I love that nickname, by the way. As you know, we're we're big on nicknames here at Habs Digest. We we love our we love our Habs. We love showing them some love. I think that definitely fits. And I think that that's a great call with Aginla, right? It's uh, well, not Aginla. That's another prospect, but Lindstrom rather, because with the size, we've shown that that's kind of an important thing to still balance out th this team, right? You know, because we got you know we got Suzuki, we got Cool. If this is going to be part of our first line, you kind of need some size within that top six to really balance it out, especially if Newhook's kind of part of it. Now, for sure, Doc's a big boy, was and bad, but again, you look at these teams that do so well in the playoffs, right? It's really hard to bet against that size, You obviously, but you want that skill. So I'm totally okay with a guy like Lindstrom and just being patient because I think that's the name of the game with these proxies. We need to remember Habs fans, even for our next big... We got to be patient, even with this guy, right? Because we show if we're patient, we give them some love. Really, they can reward us. You know, Slav has really shown us so far, right? So, I mean, you know, that type of player really for building the winning hockey, I think, is more important than anything else. Like, you know, I don't want to start saying some slander or anything else like that. But, like, I believe, like, a player with size, because of the intangibles it brings, just contributes so much more to winning hockey. Now, we know, like, Matthews on such a... Crazy goal scoring pace, right? But if I look at a guy like Slav, another first overall pick, you know, it's like, for me, I believe in his prime. A guy like Slav is going to have just as much, and dare in my honest opinion, more of an effect on the game than in Austin Matthews. I know that's a lot, but there's so much more than the goal scoring that goes into it, right? Because Toronto's often having to outscore their problems. It's so nice when you can have players where it's like, it's not goal scoring isn't the only thing that's part of the game. It's not the only thing that matters. It's so easy sometimes just to look at stats, get completely wrapped up in that when there is so much more. Obviously, it's important. Scoring goals is important. I'm not saying that Austin Matthews is not a good player, but who the players that really impact winning hockey games, we have to remember that's what it matters about. At the end of the day, any players that really the very best, they don't care about the points. They care about winning the games. And more importantly than that, they do and they adjust their game to do the things that contribute to the winning hockey. So that's definitely my two cents on that. I, I love that. And there's a lot of people saying that's a hot take, but I love that you're saying it. And we actually got Leafs Digest in the chat saying Matthews is the GOAT. And tell, <laughs> get them get them out of here. No, we don't we don't need any Austin Matthews <laughs> loving this chat. Oh yeah, he's skilled. That's about as he's skilled and he's a good goal scorer. Probably the best in the league. It's about all I'm gonna say positive about Austin Matthews. But I mean, yeah, I think I think you're right, Jesse. I think these multifaceted players can make such a big difference 
on the ice when they uh, when they hit their potential. Now, the thing with Lindstrom, I think a lot of people might not be super patient if, if they want the Habs to really, really head into their next phase quickly. I mean, he's definitely not one of those guys who projects to immediately make a massive impact compared to someone like a Cole Iserman. If he hits right away, he could potentially be a, a 20, 25 goal score very early on, right? Um, and you know what? Actually, we're going to transition away from that because we got another super chat and it is Matt with a $10 super chat. Give some love to Matt. Give some likes to that message. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, let's just get right into this. He said, what contract would you give to Gooley and Slav when they are due for an extension? Oh boy. Well, that's a tough uh, question that I definitely am not totally prepared to answer without some specific numbers, but I will say this. I remember we made a video a while ago after the Jake Sanderson extension talking about Caden Gooley and how it could be a multi-year, six, seven year, 54 million-ish um kind of contract extension i would be willing to bet it'd be somewhere around there between six to eight years uh and i would say somewhere between 50 and 60 mil just based on what we saw sanderson get and Gooley's impact has been uh well arguably better offensively than sanderson which is kind of surprising when you look at it um that's kind of my take on that jesse i think he gets something similar to what jake sanderson got just because that's kind of what the market was set at they're similar age they have similarly high roles in their organization do you think that's a bit off base or would you say it's maybe around there too and we'll get into slav in a second it's around there because they're foundational type of players and like you always want to be super careful with these long-term types of deals. They can seem great, but if you don't do this well, you can totally just basically, you know, just sink your team, right, by doing that. But if you're really careful and really strategic in these types of deals, the way that it can really pay you out in the future is really you're getting such a bargain. I think they did really well with Cole, with Nick Suzuki. If you're looking at Cole's underlying numbers on defense, by the way, it's absolutely unreal. I'm so shocked to see that right now. So there's other ways to kind of live into those contracts. Of course, they're scary, right? But these are the foundational players, and you're not giving that to anybody. But those are two, you know, and there's maybe a one or two others that, you know, I'd kind of put in that longer term sort of range with the Montreal Canadiens, but not that many more. And unfortunately, like, you can't be giving out too many of those longer term deals. But for a Caden Gooley and for a Slav, and an underrated note, these are both leaders on these teams. Yes. These are two players being groomed to be leaders. So that's another reason why you want to lock them on these long term deals. It's going to benefit your team so much more by having these players on these type of contracts where you can really kind of control your financial future. Obviously we know the cap kind of going up in the way it is. It's be an incredible investment. So I think that that's definitely the way to go for these two players. You got to lock them up long-term. I think so too. I see uh, for you to NV in chat. I don't know if there's an easier way to say your name. You're always here around. Thank you very, very much. Uh, if there's an easier way to say your name or a way you prefer to be called, then uh, definitely let us know. Um, but you said five for five for Gooley. Honestly, if they sign Gooley to a five by five, I, I, first of all, that would be a steal, in my opinion. I think Gooley's AAV, like if you signed him tomorrow, I think he would get between six and a half and eight million dollars per season. It wouldn't shock me to see him get uh, upwards of seven million, if not more. I think five would be very low for him. But I also think five years would be too short if you're looking forward for the Montreal Canadiens. You, you don't just, you want to do right by Gooley, of course. But if you have the opportunity to lock him up long term, you're going to try everything you can to do that. So which is why I think I projected maybe a bit longer. And I think that uh, for you to envy. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah, that's what J Jacob says. That uh, seems like two solid, solid, durable players. Yeah. So Slavkovsky, this is so hard to say, because obviously when you project him out, like you can sign him to a contract extension very, very soon. When you project him out, he could be absolutely amazing, right? Like absolutely amazing. You sign him to an eight year extension. How much do you pay him, right? Do you pay him? You obviously have to weigh what he's already done in the NHL versus his growth in the second half of this year versus what he projects to do long term. Will it will it be a contract? It doesn't even matter if it ages well, because even if you sign him for an eight year extension, you're going to get him till you know, he's not going to be a free agent until he's before 30. So I don't know. I, I think with Slav, I think we've kind of talked a bit about something near an eight by eight, Jesse, um, somewhere between like eight years between seven and eight million dollars. I think that makes a lot of sense, but it's one of those contracts that you have to gamble on. I mean, like, remember when the Oilers signed Leon Dreisaitl? A lot of fans said, holy crap, that is so much money. He, he has not proven enough to get that. Now it is, I mean, it has been basically the best contract in the NHL alongside someone like a McKinnon. When you're looking at Slavkovsky, I think you're looking at somewhere between, you know, seven, eight years, seven, eight million dollars per. Um, 
I, I think that's about what you have to do. I, and if you're Montreal, like, do you run that risk of that handcuffing you long term? But the thing is, I think he's shown enough mentally and physically to prove that one day he will be putting up numbers that will. I mean, if you just take his last like what thirty games ish, I mean, he's basically already worth what five six easy per season so i don't think it's that much of a stretch to say that especially with the cap going up he could easily be a seven to eight million dollar player if not better in the next three or four seasons yeah and it's because of that consistency again that makes so much easier as we're starting to get closer to contract talk for him of kind of doing that because again you want to see in the night out it's not good enough to just do it once in a while and kind of disappear but these seven eight game point streaks putting this up consecutively back to back is exactly the type of info the type of ammo you need if you're Kent Hughes because you want to offer this guy that big contract you want him to be the corner stone of your franchise but you just need to see it from him and if he shows it to him you're offering that to him on a silver plate you're so happy and it ends up becoming a tremendous bargain of course there's always a risk with all this but again, you can't really, in order to be successful in the NHL, you do need to take those controlled risks when you can because of the way that it frees you up to really engineer the rest of your team. The type of consistency and continuity that it really brings in your team as well, where you can really shape and have an identity of your team. We can build around this. We're not playing kind of a roulette every year. We, we don't know who's kind of coming in, coming out. There's a lot to be said about building a team, and that's what we want to do is having this young team and then having them compete together for a long period of time. So inherent in that is signing these guys for long term, to have them together. It's really determining who's our core. You know, We got Caulfield, we got Suzuki, we got Slav, we got Gooley. I would throw Jack Eye in that picture. You know, still more of a fringe guy, but still they want to be part of this organization long term. You know, New Hook's fighting to be part of that conversation. Doc is fighting to be part of that conversation. Now, obviously, we can't say, you get an eight-year deal. You get an eight-year deal to all these guys here. But it's you can, with your main guys, getting for as long as possible, you know, while they've kind of shown you that they can do what they can do, I think it's definitely the right move to, again, have that success where year in, you're out, we're being playoff and Stanley Cup contenders. Yeah, you're very right. And building that team up from the ground up and knowing you're doing right by the players, giving them these big extensions. You're not tiptoeing around it, trying to like maximize your profit as a team. But also we've seen with the extensions from Suzuki and Caulfield on contracts that could very well become extra. I mean, Suzuki's is already a steal. Caulfield, I mean, with his recent jump in playmaking, like these are going to be fantastic contracts, especially as the cap goes up. They're already great. You see guys willing to stay. They want to stick around. That bodes well for Montreal. And it also bodes well for these guys because they know they'll be able to stick around long term. Um, I just wanted to give another shout out for Matt for that question. Thank you so much, Matt. And I saw he left another comment saying, I want to draft a meet off. I'd love to meet off. I'm just not totally sold that his moves will translate to a higher league yet but again who am i to say that because we haven't seen him play in a higher league maybe they will maybe they won't i think that's just a lot of conjecture his skill uh and his just uh, his phenomenal ability to move around players and pull out moves that you've never seen is, is unbelievable um i see leafs digest they say matthews is better than mcdavid all right that's enough of you um call it for you too envy i'll call you for you that sounds a lot easier thank you very much for you um yeah, just going to read a few more chats, guys, before we go. And again, if you have one, if you have something that you really want to get in, we're going to end the stream and I'd say less than five minutes. So if you have something you really want to get in, send a super chat and we'll we'll answer it in priority order. Other than that, I'm going to try to get through a couple of these things. Um, I see a question, Johnny Cash saying, do you guys think Montreal needs more sandpaper for their prospects? I like to protect the young prospects. I think Jack is good, and I think Pizzetta is good, but that's actually an interesting question, Jesse. Maybe we can touch on that just for a minute here. Do you think that with all these young guys coming up, and even on the team now, adding some sandpaper other than what they already have in Pizzetta, who might be squeezed out of the lineup due to pure talent in the next couple of years, well, a year or two, I mean, who knows if he'll re-sign his contract after this current one uh, expires, plus Jack in the back end, do you think they maybe need some more grit, or is that kind of becoming a thing of the past? Because to me, I definitely don't mind having some, but I don't know if you need to use... Uh, a forward spot on that extra grit just to protect someone they kind of already have galley and anderson who despite their contracts do offer that at least to some extent um yeah i don't know what, what are your thoughts on that yeah you definitely need the grit that's a gr great question right there's no getting around that especially as we want to be a playoff team as close as next year maybe right so it's like we see kind of the changing of the guard right now. I believe that we got some of that in the organization by some great drafting and also just some great selections. Other than that, I think 
the changing of the guard where David Savard is providing a large part of that sandpaper in terms of just protecting the net and kind of being that guy because you need that, keeping that space, that perimeter around the goalie. He does the majority of that. Now I see a changing of the guard with now Jack Eye, Arbor Jack Eye. And again, it takes a specific type of player to do that. Not everybody can do that. It often kind of takes a defenseman. You're protecting the front of the net to kind of do that and to really hold it down. Um, obviously, I like Florian a lot for that reason. I think in your bottom six, what you're really looking for a lot of time is that energy. If you have that on your fourth line, your third line, that's a success, right? But you definitely, you need that edge to the game because the momentum is so important. Somebody like a Pizzetta throwing those hits, like we can't underestimate. That's what leads to the goal. That's what creates the momentum. And the momentum is what creates the goals, what creates the positive plays in the game. These guys affect the game in tremendous ways. That's why you absolutely need it. So we do have some young guys that are there and it's nice to see with the young guys because again, you need them to kind of be the next ones to kind of carry the torch for, for that grip. But I believe, you know, we'll also we'll recognize that need to kind of bring that in as well. And I think that would be a very, very important balance to have. But of course, Slav, like you almost like he plays with some grit as well. He the does. way he's hitting people over, winning puck battles. Like grit is shown in different ways, but it's winning puck battles. It's knocking people over. And I mean, that's really important because a lot of teams don't have that grit on their first line in that type of way. When you can have a really skilled guy, but the same guy that can maybe make you take a seat when it's his time, you know, I mean, that is extremely, extremely important as well. Yeah, it's something I like to call anti-gravity. I mean, you see it in basketball <laughs> when with a guy like Victor Wembanyama, right? He just stands there. People don't want to shoot on him. In hockey, when you have a guy yeah. like Arbor Jacka, he exhibits some of that anti-gravity. I don't know if that's something that's common to say in the hockey community. I love saying it. I don't know if it's a thing, but when you, you kind of repel people away from you just by your simple presence, and I think that is something that the Habs do have a bit of, and I think Slaff is starting to develop into that too. Of course, you have Pizzetta. You have Anderson, who people kind of tend to try and stay away from because he loves to finish his hits. Um, Pizzetta, of course, hits per 60. I believe he's still leading the NHL. Uh, if not, he's very close. So there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, I see someone's mentioning Lindstrom is another big guy they could draft to do that. Matt says, do you think Montreal should go after Zegras in the offseason? We got a few videos talking about Zegras. Um, I think our, our opinion, Jesse, is that like, not unless you get him for an absolute steal. I think he's phenomenal, but I think that the Habs can, you know, if he's available for a decent price, go for it. I don't know. I, I think we, we've talked enough about his locker room potential problems uh, otherwise. Um, but I see one last thing that I think we're going to answer. Um, well, actually, I, I'm going to answer for you first. Another question now that you brought it up. Is there ever a possibility of the Digest community extending to NBA content? Well, for you, if you didn't know, we currently have, I hope I don't miss one, Raptors Digest. We have Courtside Digest, which is an all NBA channel covering all the br latest breaking stories in the NBA. We have Lakers Digest for the Los Angeles Lakers, Celtics Digest, Heat Digest digest bulls digest and soon to come nuggets digest suns digest and also final shout out to mavs digest mavericks digest marcel martin over there and mavericks digest that channel grew to 3,000 subscribers in less than a week so if you're interested in any nba channels we only have what six or seven teams now but go check it out um we have lots and lots and lots of other stuff going on here at Nick's Digest. I forgot. Thank you, Nick. Uh, my brother, Nick, Nick in chat. New York Nick's Digest. I knew I was going to forget something. It's hard to just do it off the top of my head, but thank you very much. Um, I see Planko saying not many people know about the Discord. That's true, guys. We do have a Discord. So if you're ever interested in messaging with some other Habs fans, head to our Discord. The link's in every description, every single video where you can chat with all the other Habs fans from this channel. And on that note, we also have Spotify. So if you ever want to check out our show, you can't watch it in video form. Maybe it uses too much data. Maybe you're at work, something like that. Habs Digest on Spotify. Uh, I'll see if I can get the link up here. Let me and post it in the chat. Uh, I'm just going to type that there for you guys. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get to Spotify. Bear with me uh, while I do this. But uh, there's, you know, there's some good stuff. I'm gonna, I promise it's going to be worth it, guys. Um, and once I find this and send the link, which I'm going to do right now, now there it is and there it is boom there's our show on spotify so go give that a five star rating and go listen to us if you can't catch the video form um but jesse i think that's going to do it again guys apologize uh we apologies we apologize if we didn't get to any of your messages or all your messages and like we said there's a lot of chats here we have a lot of news to bring you so um join us next monday every monday 6 15 p.m eastern maybe we'll get to your message then and of course as always as you guys saw if you send a super chat we are extremely grateful and we will answer those in priority um but that's about it jesse any, any closing remarks for another successful monday stream 
Thank you guys all for coming out. It's such a pleasure. We love getting to interact with you guys. You guys are beautiful, intelligent hockey fans. So, so happy to have you here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all the support. We did hit over 100 likes. And on your way out, if you wouldn't mind hitting like, or if you're not subscribed, somehow hit subscribe. Help us out a lot. And as you guys know, that will do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like right now. Comment, subscribe to the channel. We have daily Montreal Canadiens content and now weekly live streams. I've been your host, Josh Goss, for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.